Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give all praise to the Most High, Yahweh. <clears throat> Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High blesses this lesson this evening. Gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand the events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Brethren, as we're looking at what's going on, you can see how the Most High is bringing down the other nations. All the while, he's raising up his people. He's giving us more knowledge and understanding. We must understand why these things are happening, how deep this all goes, how the other nations have worked so tirelessly to uh, keep us away from our, our power and knowledge of self, knowing who we are. This is not just America. And you're going to see how, you know, I, I saw it before. But in this uh, lesson today, you're going to see it even more how they took our inventions, our way of life, and just handed it off to other people to other nations. Today we're going to be getting on the Chinese and how they gave the Chinese credit for something that we were doing, I'm sure, thousands of years before they gave the Chinese credit. So it's like they've been working together to give credit to other nations for inventions that we made because they're like, hell no, you guys are never going to know what you guys did, what you guys were doing before. We came to, you know, we were given the opportunity to come and take over your lands and your people. There are so many nuggets in this right here, in this book. America, right? Accurate description of the new world. And they've ripped out or cut out many, many pages. And um, as I'm kind of trying to do some research, try to find some of them, some of those other pages, you know, I get other information. I was watching a brother, and I'm going to try to put his um, video in the description box. But he was reading from this section of the book. And this is why I'm, you know, I wanted to get the book so we can read around different areas. He'd only shown like a couple of the um, paragraphs. But there's so much more meat around different areas of these paragraphs. This is going to show you that they were well aware when the Spaniards came over here that they were fulfilling biblical prophecy. They've made it seem as if biblical prophecy only pertains to the so-called Middle East and that there was no biblical prophecy happening anywhere else. Just like how the Most High showed me about Revelation 6 and the pale horse being allowed to come to the fourth part, that's all biblical prophecy. There's going to be more right here in this section. They're actually talking about Esau and Obadiah. And that's why, you know, I've done videos on Columbus. If you want to search those out and take a look at those, um, Columbus knew exactly what he was coming over here for. He was not coming over here to find a route to China. He knew he was coming over here to take down the Most High's chosen people. And that's why these evangelists and all these, you know, these pastors just don't want to talk about anything but abortion as far as killing or spilling innocent blood. I'm going to read the top part and I'm going to see here. I'm going to read it out of the book. This is kind of hard to get pictures sometimes of this. Hold on real fast. Be a little patient with you people. I'm making my way to the page here. Okay, here we go. It says, but what signifies all this to the discovery of America 
which lies not only oh, hold on. not only under the scorching heats of the equinox of the equinox but under the frost and snows of the arctic and the uh, arctic poles so it's showing you that america goes from the north all the way down to the south okay the different poles okay yet let's pro um Less probable is that um, that which Lodwick Leo, hold on, an Augustine friar takes out of Obadiah, as if that prophet uh, and the three last verses of his prophecy should speak on the Spaniards or speak of the Spaniards, which uh, should not only discover and conquer America, but also convert the inhabitants to the uh, Christian faith. Because those that are in Spanish, are in Shepherd, should inherit and possess the cities of the South. And saviors shall arise from the mountain of Zion to judge the mount and wealth of Esau. <clears throat> so all they've done is just switch up everything. All of a sudden now, they're the sons of God, and the people over here are the Edomites. That's what's going on right here. So they they knew about what was going on. It's just they wanted to switch it up and tell it from their point of view. Let's take a look at Obadiah in the last. See, this is one thing that they never want to talk about. They never want to talk about Obadiah now, but they love talking about it before. Let's take a look at the last few verses. Let me see here, of Obadiah. See, today we bring up Obadiah and it, it, it act like that's not even in the Bible. Obadiah 1. And last three verses. It says, And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau. And they of the plain, of the plain, the Philistines. And they shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria. And Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites. Even unto uh, Zarephath and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Shepherd. Or Sepharad, remember, my, my fault. Sepharad shall possess the cities of the south. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. And the kingdom shall be uh, shall be the Lord's. Now, yeah, you guys got your opportunity to come over and destroy our people. You got your opportunity to change up, you know, everything as far as a story. You got your opportunity to say that you're the children of the Most High. Got your opportunity to say, oh, we're the Edomites and that we're the ones that are cursed. I mean, that's fine, you know, but that wasn't the uh, last page of the story, though. That was just your chapter. Now we've come to the end. And now we're telling you the truth. And see, this is why they, you know, the last 800 years or so, they act like, you know, from the conjunctions where they were actually getting their blessings, you know, they don't want to talk about that. They want to talk about how they're going to continue on their blessings right now. Let's continue. <clears throat> but certainly, Obadiah meant no other than the Uh, reflaturation of the Jews from the captivity of Babylon. See, now they get, they're they going to go in and give you their breakdown of the Bible, as they always do. You know, it can only be this way. But certainly, Obadiah meant no other than the uh, restoration of the Jews. There we go. From the, Bab the capt uh, captivity of Babylon, who after their return should grow more powerful than ever. See, that's what they always do. You know, it says this in here, but what Oh, but I really meant to say that's the, that's what they always try to do. You know, this is for certain. What I'm saying to you right now, my breakdown is for certain. That's what they've been doing this entire time. And they could do that when it was their blessing, of course. Let's continue. And they, led by their Messiahs, maybe, obtained the height of all felicity. 
It says, who would uh, send his evan evan evangelists and apostles to declare salvation to the utmost? Okay, borders of the earth. So now they're talking about, hey, sending send their salvation to the all, all four corners. This is the fourth part. This is all part of prophecy. They'll be able to bring their story to the four corners of the earth. Okay? It is true that the rabbins expound uh, Sephar, Sepharad to be Spain, and therefore he concludes that Obadiah prophesied of the Spaniard and their conquests in America. So see, they're using Obadiah to justify what they're doing over here in America that Obadiah was talking about the Spanish coming here and conquering America. For they would prove that America was not was long known before Christ. And we know that now, especially looking at these other books, that uh, especially from the video, the last video talking about the uh, navigators and how it was the, uh, you know, the ancient Celts that were great navigators and talk about them actually going to America before Christ. So that knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of America was already here before Christ was here. And they're using the Bible to actually justify their actions. They knew that they were going to be sent over here. They knew they were going to get their opportunity to get um, <clears throat> over here to America, to the, to the children that were over here, the most highest chosen people that were already over here. They knew they were going to get their opportunity. Columbus pretty much admits it in his own books. See, that's why they don't talk about um, Columbus's firsthand accounts of his books, the Book of Prophecies. I might have to go, actually go back and put some of this information together in another video, okay? But, see, but now they don't want to talk about Obadiah and how it was actually um, being actually fulfilled right now. See, this, they only looked at those last three. Let's look at, uh, you know, Obadiah 1 and 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. And he's talking about right there. For the things they did to Jacob, they're going to be cut off. They're going to be cut off from these lands forever. Just like in Revelation 18 and how the other merchants are losing their minds when this place is destroyed. Because they know they're going to be cut off from these lands forever. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look here. There's this part here on the side. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit of it and let you guys check it out. But I'll make it a little bit bigger for you right here. Okay. And it says, uh, well, I guess that's a part of, Zo of actually Obadiah right there. But they're actually putting it right there. They're writing it out for you right here. They knew exactly what they were coming over here to do. If America is known in the scriptures, they know all this stuff did not happen in just that little itty bitty plot of land over there in the so-called Middle East. They're talking about America right here, fulfill, being, being uh, actually fulfilling prophecy. They were fulfilling prophecy when they got here. But you're not going to hear your uh, pastors or priests talking about this. This is information that they already had. <clears throat> now, the guy's other video that I saw. When I was doing some research, like I said, he he concentrates pretty much on these two um, paragraphs. So if you want more, I said I'll put it, I'll leave it in the link, and you guys can check out this. It's like a ten minute video, but it's good information about this book, and that's why I wanted to get the book because then we can actually read around certain areas. We can read around and get more information, and that's what we're going to do right now. Now we're going to continue. And this is what I wanted to get into right here. These guys are now going to be talking about Solomon. And, you know, and him actually navigating the world. <clears throat> and you can see how they've lied about, they've taken uh, information from Solomon. They've taken like, a lot of his um, things that he's accomplished. And they gave credit to other people. Now, everyone must pretty much know that our people knew how to work with rocks and plants. We were the ones that was, was given 
that information. We were given that information. We were given that download by the Most High. It's given to Enoch. Enoch's been passing it down to his kids the entire time. So that's what's going on. So when you actually understand that, and then you start reading this information, then you're going to know it was not given to the Gentiles. Then you're going to realize it was given to our people. So if, if we've been given this knowledge, understanding of how to use rocks and, you know, and oils and plants, then when you start reading this part, you're going to realize that it couldn't have been given to the other nations. And they also talk about how Solomon was the most wise. He was the wisest. We know, you know, he got the Holy Spirit and she downloaded, gave him great wisdom. OK, so now we're going to read <clears throat> going forward here. OK. It says, and lastly, it signifies as um, it signifies as little what Beneda and Livinus Limnius drive at that Solomon first finding the use of the compass. Uh, I would say rigged a navy at uh, Ezion Gerber, Gerber, which from the Red Sea had no direct course <clears throat> to the Straits of Magellan. Now, I don't know why they seem to think that he would only be in the Red Sea when we've been going all over the place. Why they would actually try to um, limit... Yeah, they're like, okay, Solomon had the compass, but he was only he was only stuck in the Red Sea. Like, really? That makes absolutely no sense. So he went, he he went around, he sent out great fleets for three and a half years, only if they're on the Red Sea or in the Mediterranean. Come on now. <clears throat> so it says, uh, yeah, which from the Red Sea had no di di indirect course to the Straits of Magellan. Okay. From whence he might uh, lay his vessels with the gold of Peru. So now they're talking about the gold of Peru. So the only thing that kept Solomon away was, was that he was in the Red Sea. I mean, come on now. They couldn't have built ships at other places. It says, in whose description it shall be manifested that Peru is not Ophir, as some without any show of reason or truth would make us believe. See, and that's the thing. They they want everything's got to fit their profile. Everything's got to fit their download. They're the ones, A, hey, if we don't, that's that whole taking the place of God, right? The Imago Dei. If we don't, if we don't agree, it's not true. Hey, we only gave you 80 books. Don't be asking, don't be reading anything else. We've already told you the new year is at the end of December. Don't don't bring up anything about springtime. We've already told you, Jesus' birthday is December 25th. Don't be getting all high and mighty and thinking that you know better than us. We're telling you, we don't accept, you know, springtime. So that, that's their mentality. And you see that mentality even till today. When, you know, hey, they went last Wednesday, you know, Cops helped uh, actually open up some of the gates for them and, you know, gave the MAGA group a tour, told them, hey, you know, this is uh, Pelosi's office. Hey, maybe, maybe you want to go here. You know, just, just laid them around, taking selfies, tearing up stuff. You know, because, hey, this is their country, right? This is their house. They can do whatever they want to, right? Well, now all of a sudden, you know, they're sending out the FBI to pick up people take him to jail and they're like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I feel so bad about that. You know, can you just give me a pass? You know, I'm, that's what it's now like. Oh, I feel so bad. I, that was the worst decision I ever made. See when the consequences come, come, then all of a sudden it's uh, a, uh, this is let bygones be bygones. All right. That's how, that's how Esau is that they've been able to say whatever they want to say, do whatever they want to do, but then never have to um, pay for anything. That's what's going on right here. They got the, they got their little breakdown of everything, and you're not allowed to go against it. They're telling you that, hey, he wasn't sending ships over here to the Americas to get gold. You know, it's, it's, and, that, and that's it. They, they, they've Because they said it, that's it. They're used to that. Let's continue. 
But as concerning King Solomon's finding out of the use of the magnet, it is soon said, but not easily proved. See, he figured out that, you know, hey, this magnet right here, you, we're going to find out about the magnet. You can actually uh, use it as a compass. And then, you know, then you can actually sail all these different places because you have a compass, a compass now. That's stuff that's been hidden. Stuff they don't want you to know. And he got this. He Solomon had this stuff a long time ago. Now, they're going to say it's not true. But who cares what they say? Who was given the knowledge of the stones? Who was given the knowledge of how to use the stones? The Hebrews. So would it not make sense then that if they have this certain stone that's magnetized, that they would be able to use that as a compass to be able to, you know, I don't know, sail to America, sail all these different places, conduct trade. See, they want to make it sound as if they're the only ones that built great ships. They're the only ones that was able to actually come across the ocean. That the Gentiles were the only ones that have done anything. These are the lies that they've been pushing this whole time. But now they're being caught. They're being shown to be a bunch of no, no good liars. So again, but as concerning King Solomon, Solomon's finding out of the use of the magnet, it is soon said, but not easily proved. For thought that Prince uh, exceeded all mankind in wisdom and learning and was perfect in the operations and knew <clears throat> the uh, Akelfel, Akel, I don't know, Occultic secrets of nature. Okay, so he's got he's, he got all this information about nature. How did he get that? Because that's the Most High. Who gave that to him? The Most High. Who who people to give that to? The Most High's chosen people. He had great knowledge of the of secrets of nature, understanding. Okay, what are belong to plants, from the cedar of Libanus, to hyssop, and the meanest shrub that grows upon the wall yet it nothing makes out that he knew the mystery of the navigable use of the lodestone <clears throat> now it makes sense he he had he would have use and he would have an under understanding of how to use the lodestone you know and then that i didn't really, i've never put that together but i said but it's here in the book So again, nothing makes out that he knew the mystery of the navigable use of the lodestone. But suppose he did know. There is nowhere any mention of it. And if this excellent thing, the compass, has been found in Solomon's time, how came it afterward so utterly to be lost? Why is that? Because we don't need to share stuff with you. So if, if if Solomon had it and our people had it, the Phoenicians had it, and they were going all over the place, the information wasn't lost. It was just wasn't given to you. The Most High made a covenant with the Most High's chosen people. That's in the Book of Mormon over here. He said, if you guys follow me, I will keep the Gentiles away from you. But if you don't follow me, I will bring them over here and they will destroy you. This is more confirmation right here that our people had this technology and we damn sure we're not going to share it with the Gentiles. And the Most High would definitely make sure to keep them away because he knew how they, what they would do as soon as they got over here. Rape, rob, murder, steal, hide information, all that. All that. So right here, this is just more confirmation that the Most High gave his people this information and didn't share it with the others. We had all this and they did not. We are not going to share it with you. Just like now, we're not, I'm not sharing every, all this information with the Gentiles or the other nations. And the Most High is keeping it away from them. He's the one that's keeping them blinded so they don't search. He's only allowing certain people to actually come and get this knowledge and understanding. So that's all the Most High. 
we're, we're not supposed to be just giving the Gentiles all of our all of our information. When it says, don't cast your pearls before swine, who do you think the swine are? Who do you think are the ones that have the pearls? Who do you think knew better than Solomon about that? No one. Because he was like the most wise. Well, so I give that information. Like, I'm going to give this to you guys, but don't be sharing it with the other nations because this is what they'll do with it. And see, when he gave them their opportunity to get that information, gave them that, that information, and, and they were given, well, they gave a lot of this credit to all of a sudden them being able to sail over here to the Asians, to the Chinese. We're going to get into that too. Did you see? that? But that's how they do. They, they're trying their best not to let everybody know that we're the ones that have this information. I just think that's absolutely huge information right there. Okay, so let's continue. It says, but suppose he did know. There is nowhere any mention of it. And if this excellent thing, the compass, had been found in Solomon's time, how came it afterwards so utterly to be lost? Like I said, it was only lost to you guys. It wasn't for you guys to know. The only reason you guys got the information was because we messed up. Then once we messed up, the Holy Spirit, like I said, in the Book of Mormon, was going to lead you over here. And that's what she did. She gave you the means to make it over here. That's when you got the knowledge and understanding of the seas all of a sudden. But see, Solomon was already going back and forth. He had his huge navy. Where were they going? Just around the Mediterranean for a couple, for three years, three and a half years? Come on now. This is why the Most High is exposing you guys right now. Because you guys have been doing nothing but lying this whole time. Let's continue at the bottom. Albertus Magnus mistakes uh, when he as ascribes the knowledge of the compass to Aristotle. See, they're trying to take the, the information about this compass and give it to Aristotle. Give it to some other uh, Edomites. They've always been trying to take our information and keep it for themselves. It says, of which he himself makes not the least mention. Aristotle didn't even say he made it. But these guys are trying their best to try to give it to somebody else. Give credit to somebody else. You're like, damn shit, we're not going to give it to the Hebrews. Let's read that again. Albertus Magnus mistakes. When he ascribes the knowledge of the compass to Aristotle, of which he himself makes not the least mention, neither Galen, Alexander, Aphrodophineus, something like that, Pliny, uh, Lucrentius, nor any of the Roman, Greek, Arabian, or other country writers whatsoever. So see, no other countries were taking credit for this. The Chinese weren't even taking credit for it. It says no other countries were taking any credit for the compass. So why all of a sudden, way later, all of these, um, well, this accomplishment with the compass has been given to another nation when they weren't given that before. This is in the 1600s. This book is written in like 1671. So by then, you know, you would think that someone would have taken credit. Let's continue. Like I said, again, nor any of the Roman, Greek, Arabian, or other country writers whatsoever. And they try to give credit to the Muslims as well. Anybody, you know, about them getting, like, I don't want to say it was the astrolabe, you know, but uh, they try to give credit to any other country, any other group that they've set up. It says, some give the honor there, thereof to an Indian, others to a shepherd in Mount Ida, whose uh, clouded shoes being see, full of hobnails, the iron sticking fast to the stones on which he stood. Okay. On the next page, I'm just going to read a little bit of it. It says, uh, And although the ancients found out many secrets of nature, amongst which this of the lodestone, this is really important, the lodestone, attracting iron as being its proper food and the three uh, sorts of the magnet. 
of which some will uh, not draw steel, found by Thamides, a Greek author. Okay, so you guys, like I said, these guys are thousands of years behind us, and they're trying to attribute these things, you know, these inventions to themselves. Now, right here, we're talking about the lodestone. Okay, I'm going to show you guys right there. Read a little bit of that again. Um, let's see here. But he knew the mystery of the nav 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 navigable use of the lodestone. So we're going to take a little look at a couple of uh, other videos talking about the lodestone. All right. And in one of the videos, it says, oh, yeah, yeah lodestone used like, for navigation in, like, in early times or something like that. I'm like, this is way more than just early times, bruh. You know, I say, but that's what they want to do. They've been there. They've, they've been had their, they've had their time to sit there and take all the credit for everything. It says, yes, this land here was great before you guys got here. It was the best, they were the best lands before you guys got here. It was our lands before, and it's going to be our lands again. There's a picture there of the lodestone. It's a naturally magnetized piece okay, of the mineral magnetite. There are naturally occurring magnets, which can attract iron. The property of magnetism was first discovered in antiquity through lodestones. These things were actually given to our people. It's all making sense, how they've been hiding everything, taking credit for everything telling you don't look at any other books because we're going to tell you that everything in the Bible, everything happened over there. You see how that, that, that Bible is only talking about what's happened over there in that little small area in the so-called Middle East. That's what they've told you. That's what they led you to believe. And if you don't question anything, you'll still think that that's where every, all prophecy is happening. That's what they've, how they've used the Bible to keep you looking in one little itty bitty place. Now that we're going to you know, other books, this book right here just tells you that they were they knew their prophecy was being fulfilled over here in the Americas. You heard it from them. You saw it in their own books. They switched up who's who, but they do know that prophecy is not being fulfilled in that little itty bitty strip of land that you, they call Israel today. And they know that they were fulfilling prophecy when the Spanish got here in 1492. They knew that. How come you guys don't know that? How come, you know, not you guys, but the other nations? You guys know that now. I said, because the Most High has opened our eyes and been downloaded to us. But the other nations, they're still thinking their prophecy is all about what's happening over there. A little, a couple of short little videos here about the lodestone, a navigational aid right there. And a navigation aid would be for the Most High. You imagine our ships. You imagine, I mean, you know, us going on a three and a half year tour to sell, you know, and trade and barter. You know, our ships were hooked up. You know, our navigation system would it be just the using it would just be using a rock like this. The Most High gave us the best of the best. So you know, our navigation systems were on point. And that we were going worldwide to trade. And people knew when they came in, you know, when we came into the dock, you know, they knew what we, the, they wanted the stuff that we had. So I'm sure that we got our ships loaded down with gold on the way back, as well as, you know, other things from the other nations. But they make it seem as if, you know, our people can't swim. We don't know anything about ships. They're the ones that came up with all these great ships. Like I said, I'm starting to believe that, you know, a lot of these things like uh, these ships and these blessings come from certain areas. You know, as all these books about the uh, ley lines over there in uh, Europe, well, and uh, Ireland and Britain. So maybe that's maybe that's where the ports were. Maybe that's where we built our great ships. You know, I said we maybe instead of like looking at little itty bitty little pieces of land that we had huge land masses given to the 12 tribes only makes so much sense. Correct. Let's check this out.
So again, just go back. Who was given the, the knowledge and understanding of the stones, of the rocks, and their uses? Plants, oils. Who was given that? The Hebrews. So, and, and now you also saw how they said that the other nations were not taking credit for the compass. None of the other nations took the credit took credit for the compass. And this is in the sixth book. It was written in 1671. So supposedly the Han dynasty found the, um, figured out the compass. Wouldn't they uh, have already taken credit way before this book was written? This book said no, no one was taking credit for the compass. Let's check out the next one. All right, I'm just going to watch a little bit of this one because I want you to see who they're giving credit to for the compass in this video. That was enough right there. The first compasses were made of lodestone. Okay. A naturally magnetized ore of iron. In Han Dynasty, China, between 300 and 200 BC. See how they just wrote us right out of history and took credit for the compass? You see, in our scriptures, like I said, they make reference to our huge navies and fleets. Now, how would they be? Why, why would we have huge navies and fleets if we didn't have a compass? Now, you read the other information about how there's already uh, expeditions going from, you know, Britain and Ireland all the way into the Americas way before Christ. Why is it said in, the other, in that book that no one was taking credit for the compass? No other nations. But all of a sudden here, they're saying it was a Han dynasty. You see how they were working, taking over our our lands all worldwide, and then taking credit for our own inventions. Our people were rich. We we had the great resources. We had the Most High behind us. We had the Most High giving us knowledge and understanding that no other nations knew. So like I said, so you can see right here, we just caught them again in another huge lie about the compass, about then if they could, if they, other people, the other nations did not have a compass, then they did, were not navigating all over the world. They were not making, you know, they weren't over there making all this money. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's going on right now. And that's why the Multi is exposing them. So see, you know, when not until they, they got a hold of our ley lines, got our information over there in Europe and uh, Ireland, and then the Most High gave the Holy Spirit to Columbus and led him over here. Gave him the knowledge and understanding to get over here. So, like I said, I hope that this video gives more knowledge and understanding. This is just a little bit. This is just two more paragraphs from what the other guy read on his. And look at all this, all this meat, all this information. That then confirms what we've been learning in the other books. It's confirmed we're learning about the ley line. And the power that we had and the power that we will soon have once more. This is absolutely awesome information, brethren. And we caught them in more lies right here. They're using the Bible to explain what's going on here in the Americas. So we caught them on that lie. And it was this was, you know, hundreds of years ago. So these church uh, pastors were trying to use abortion and uh, the election as reasons as to uh, what's why their country is being uh, taken down is a bunch of garbage. Because they don't want to admit that their actions as soon as they got here already set them up to be taken down. 
All praise is to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who was wisdom? Who was the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.